morning, my good man. Right. Did you have to sweep the high street in the case Avenue? Look at the time. What's your watch say? Tick, tick. Ah, oh, Mr. Town Clown. Mr. Burr, this really isn't fair. The council's in session and you're not there. Well, I'll go to the foot of our stir. Get somebody else to take the chair. But I can't balance the rates. Well, in that case, I'd better juggle with the petty cash. <laughs> <laughs> Nine punch returned empties, ten at each way, fetlock funny, one on Fortin's hush money. That's a throwaway two, carry nine, flyaway Peter, flyaway four, apples a pound, pears, watermelon three, have not put down those plums. No, it's no good. I shall have to raise the rates again. Hello? This is Fump speaking. Oh, Fump call, eh? Beware, Mr. Mayor. Your end is in sight. Good Lord, is my shirt hanging out? You won't hang out much longer, Handley. Fump will get you. Fump has spoken. Oh, go and strain your cabbage water. He can't frighten me. Says you. Ah, now, let me, now, let me see, where was I? Oh, ten bob to come back from the dogs. Two shillings for second-hand sweet tickets. And then... Hey, where are you going? This way to the stables. That's right, straight through and up the stairs. This place is about as private as a cup final. What am I talking about? We haven't got any stables. Hey! Excuse? Well, if it isn't old ping-pong pants, what do you want? Please, mister, you give me permission to pedal on your pier? Certainly not. Any other town I pedal where I like? Well, you can't pedal here. It upsets my curriculum. Oh, pity. No, me, Mr. Tree. I sell you very nice coffee on you. Th very pongy, very sticky. No, thanks. I don't smoke. You don't like him? No. No, Mr. Tree. You buy a nice pretty postcard. Very pretty lady. Very warm. Very saucy. How dare you? Let's have a look. No, no, no. Four shillings for look. I wouldn't give you fourpence for the lot. Oh. Now go on, hop it, and don't darken my dado again. Oh, Mr. Go on. Mr. What? I go, I come back. I don't care if you never come back. And now back to the chiseling. Ah, uh, these marbles are leading me up the wrong alley. I'll try my Wall Street account. Now, let me see, uh, bears, bears, two bears, four bulls, two nanny goats. Price pudding, if it comes down, divide by 16, move to the right in fours. And Can I do your nails, sir? Well, crack me on the cranium. If it isn't Mrs. Mop, the child with the bottomless bucket. Can I, uh, can I ring you out, sir? What do you think I am, the old year? <laughs> I think you're an old rascal, sir. Ha-ha, <laughs> you've been reading my diary. I've, uh, I've brought this for you, sir. Ah, my robe of office. Help me on with it, Mrs. Mop. I'm expecting a summons at any moment. Oh, another of them nasty things, sir. I mean from the council chamber. I believe they wish to pay me the oh, honour... Oh, then I can have me back wages, sir. Pay me the honour of re-electing me for a further term. Oh. Don't jump to conclusions. Now, go easy round Tattenham Corner. I've mended the rent in the rear, sir. Yes, and you've brushed up all the banquet stains. I shan't get any more till after the war. And there are vintage ones, too. Now, where's my chain of office? I've seen it lately, sir. Oh, oh, hey, boss! Oh, hey, boss! Oh, oh. Something terrible's happened! Not now, Sam. We haven't any time for accidents this morning. Help me to look for my chain. It's had half an hour. We'll meet at the plough. Oh, I... I chanced to confine a cantering canine with your choice chain, and the canine was chased by a cantankerous cat and careered quickly across the corner, carrying the chain conspicuously. I beg your pardon? Oh, oh, oh. Listen, Sam, can't you ever make a dry statement? You mean you tied a dog to the end of my chain of office and he scarpered? Sure, boss. Uh, am I humiliated? Am I undone? D but the dog, boss... I don't want to put on the dog. I want to put on me chain. But the dog forgot to leave the chain behind when he left, see? <laughs> quick, quick. After him, Sam. And don't forget to wear your muscles. Sure, boss. I'll see you at Barky. Mr. Burr, the shouting for you in there. I've got the whole thing clear. What? You've balanced the rates without turning a hair. Good. I'll face them without further demur. The mayor, the merrier. Aha. Ah, that's better. Well, come on. Oh, I better take my account with me. Pray silence for His Worship, the Mayor. Gentlemen, you may remain seated. <clears throat> ah, nice weather we're having for this time of the year. Well, perhaps you're right. It's just that I stagger the wrong stag. <coughs> Don't do that to me. Know ye by all these presents? Ah, thank you very much. I'll unveil the presents tomorrow and they'd better be good. Members of the council are forming at the mouth. May I be the first to congratulate you at having re-elected me as mayor for a further term? Never mind that cackle. Now, Hanley, we want to know what you've done with all the money in the town's treasury. However, did you find out it wasn't there? I wanted it to be a surprise. If you don't return that money at once, we'll throw you into jail. 
throw me into my own jail. Don't be so salamony. I can't throw me into my own jail. <laughs> I've never laughed so much since I kissed my mother-in-law with a lighted cigar in my mouth. Gentlemen, we must place this in the hands of the police. Yes. Yes. Mr. Town Clerk, fetch the superintendent. This has gone far enough. In fact, it's gone too far. Why, for two pennies, I'd resign as mayor. Well, gentlemen, that concludes the business for today. The meeting is now adjourned. What did you do with the money? Yes, sir, what do you do with the money now? Well, I very wisely invested it. In what? Uh, in, uh, in a game of poker. <laughs> poker? Oh, 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 Gray, 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 silence for his turn up the card. I mean, his worship the mayor. When I said poker, I really meant that I applied the rules of that ancient and dishonorable game to uh, uh, matters of uh, high finance. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, mm. do my old eyes deceive me, especially this one? Do I see a look of suspicion lurking on your dubious dials? Well, shame on you, you shambling shysters. Never in my life. Hey, haven't you found those stables yet? No. All right, I'll come and show you where Get they are. Oh, oh, no, you here. don't. Oh, I see. <clears throat> now, Henley, what have you to say? Well, with the town's money and my pack of cards, foaming at the mouth, now owns the lease of the Olympian Theatre, the finest theatre in London. You have the audacity to admit that you invested our money in a theatre? That's right. And a London theatre, too? Yes. It's a scandal. It's disgusting. Hmm. And I suppose you intend to fill it with half-clothed women? Carried unanimously. That's an idea, panel. I'll put on a review. I'll call it, uh, Parlez-vous de Nude. That's French for Gone with the Windmill. Mr. Hanley, if you don't return the money immediately, you'll be charged with embezzlement of municipal funds. Embezzlement of the fools and titipanol? How dare you, you cad! Hear them out there, my creditors, I mean my champions, my faithful supporters, the common people. They know their mayor, they trust their mayor, they love their mayor. My friends. <laughs> well, that's the first tomato I've tasted since they were controlled. This nonsense has gone far enough. Where's that superintendent? Hey, boss, something terrible, he, he's chasing me now. Oh, he's chasing me now. What are you doing? Get away with bus tickets? Oh, but they're beautiful tickets. <laughs> Very good, sir. Uh, just a minute. This way out. The mayor is trying to make a getaway. Stop thief. Dirty spy. You'll hear from our union. It's humiliating. That's what it is, boss. That guy, Foomp, trying to scare you all the time. Don't be silly, sir. The station's full of old buffers like Foomp. Well, at last we're in the money, son. We're on our way to London like Cat Whittington and East Dick. My Olympian theatre will be a gold mine. I shall be as rich as Creosote. I'll have a car, a cigar, and a saloon bar. I'm going to be an impresario. What's that, boss? For oh, a big noise like C.B. Cato, you know, the guy that makes uh, young ladies into chorus girls. Puts on those famous shows like Screw Top and the Seven Quartz and Bat 69 and so what? Well, what are you going to use for money, boss? What all impresarios use, other people's. Now, where's my gas mask? Now, oh, that's it. Oh, isn't that nice of you? What is it, one of your daughter's dumplings? No, sir. Some of my relations wrist old. Why, they're all old and no wrist. Kick them about until you lose them. Oh, I'll do you later, sir. Go and tidy the tender. Get off for now. Okay, here for slough. Five and ninepence and half a mark. Sam, there's a quizzling in the choir. Oh, gee, boss, we ain't got enough there for two tickets to London. What are you going to tell the guard? I shall tell him that the mayor are foaming at the mouth He's doing his cockeyed railway a great honour by riding on it. And if he dares ask me for my ticket, I'll punch his return half. 
Oh, Chief Boss. What? The guard's coming now. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, here we are, Sam. The Olympian Theatre. London's noblest and most magnificent temple of the drama. The Olympian. Ah. Gee, it sure is a swell dump, boss. Swell dump? It's not only Olympian, it's positively amphibian. You know what that means? No, boss. You're quite right. In future, the seats will be put up to Tuppence, Fortens and Sixpence, including tax. If anybody asks for a half ticket, just peek through this porthole and see if they're kneeling down. Now, give me two free seats in the second-hand program. Can't you read? We're preparing a new show. Opening soon, C.B. Cato presents Stella Ferris in Hilary Craven's new musical comedy, Tonight or Never. Why wasn't I told about this? How dare they open soon behind my back? I'm going to make a few changes around here. Ah, my good man, just direct me to my office, will you? Your office? Who are you? Tell him, Sam. It's Tom Chip, the mayor. I'm the new owner of this theatre. Shine the change, Sam. Oh, it's just up those stairs, sir. Well, go and fetch it. Oh, my office? Oh, thank you. And remember, work with diligence, obey with alacrity, eat with your knife, and who knows, one day, you may be manager of the Olympian Theatre. Come on, sir. Oh, Sam, this won't do. This won't do at all. I can't play my parlor games in here. Well, what's the matter with it, boys? Well, the floor is opposite the ceiling. Everything's the wrong shape. I take back those words, Sam. Those are the shape of things to come. <laughs> Sam, we must try to make our office as attractive as our visitors. Looks like a classy joint to me, boss. Well, in this case, the joints are unrushing. Oh! You're a beauty queen, I presume? Oh, yes. When I was 16, I won an ankle competition. And worked your way up, eh? Are you an actress now? Oh, I can act all right. Uh, if I have to. As soon as I saw this theater, I said to myself, whoa-ho, shine the chain, Sam. I'm afraid we haven't been introduced. Tell her, Sam. This is his worship, the mayor. I'm Alderman Hanley. Probably you thought an alderman was a much older man. <laughs> but I can assure you, as a mayor, I'm no fool. <laughs> Jab, Sam. I'm the new owner of this theater. It's only fair to warn you. Oh, but how wonderful. How simply divine. Uh, we must have a spot of lunch together. Uh, you bring the spot and I'll find the corkscrew. Oh, yes. Well, uh, ta-ta for now. I'm a very busy man, but uh, not too busy. I'll see you later. Now, come on, Sam, come on, Sam. Clear all this mess off here. Let's okay, get to work. Quick, okay. everything ship shape. Okay. Wellington boot in four and arches. Dreadful. <laughs> ah, now here's a real artist. A cutie with a real punch. Oh, what's this? Mustafa Gasper and his company of 50 players. Shocking. Well, not too bad. Nice sax appeal. Haven't I seen you in Burton's window? Ah, she's a bit of all right, Sam. We'll leave her. Oh, well, the, uh, the office is looking better already. Yeah. What about this guy? I'll oh, give him a break, boss. Give him a break. Certainly. Ah, oh, she's a smasher. Ah, oh, more of them. Ah, oh, here's a couple of more, Sam. Oh, well, not so dusty. Bump's doing up a bit. Well, that's the ugliest mug of the whole lot. All the marks of the born criminal. You really think so? Absolutely, antimacassar. One ear hangs lower than the other. Look. I seem to have seen your face before. Now, now don't tell me, don't tell me. I... Hmm, and still I don't like it. Well, my good man, what can I do for you? I was just about to ask you the same question. I am C.B. Cato, the owner of this theater. <laughs> Tell him, Sam. That's Mr. Thomas Hanley, perpetual mayor of Foaming at the Mouth. Flash the deed, Sam. Now, uh, first of all, I think I'll have the office uh, repainted. A uh, distemper will do. If you can't get distemper, get that temper. No. You want the office repainted? Yes. Might I suggest old O'Neill with an off-white ceiling? Yes, and a dago running around the walls. Then perhaps a four-ale bar in this corner? Yes, and four-ale and arty bar made in that corner. <laughs> Very well, if you want them. No, CB, I'm beginning to like you. Thank you. Perhaps in time, even my face will grow on you. If it does, I'll wear my gas mask. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that's about everything. You can go now. Yes, but there's one teeny-weeny little thing we've overlooked. Oh? What an eyesore. All blitz and pieces. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, uh, phone up the demolition squad and tell them to move all this muck and rubble. But that muck and rubble, my dear sir, is your Olympian theater. This is the Imperial. Well, kiss me on the catamaran. Are we mortified? We're in the wrong dump, boss. 
Well, uh, oh. well uh, I, I shouldn't have blamed you, even if you'd lost your temper. What? Fantastics occurred. So this is the Olympian Theatre. Well, push me into the pit with a pole axe. Looks more like the ruins of Cromwell knocked about a bit. been in there a long time. Oh, gee, boss. This place gives me the heebie-jeebies. Well, perhaps there's a caretaker about somewhere. Oh, he came away in me mid But it's all been door, eh? Well, go easy with my theatre, Sam. He's had a nervous breakdown already. I'll have some too. I'll call again. Do. Good morning. Good morning. Who was that, boss? That was my pal, Iachi, the Phantom of the Opera. Oh. You bought a pup. <laughs> Take note of this, Sam. He always walks on Friday. I'm scared, boss. Let's get out of this place while we got the strength. Who is he? You down there. Are you speaking to me? Oh, definitely. Look here. Would you awfully mind coming over here? Hurry up. Well, no, 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 not as far as that. Back a little, please. Now, a little to your left. Uh, am I all right here? Quite, thank you. Hey! Ah, missed it. I'll get that guy, boss. I'll give him the whites. Boss, something phony's happening. I needn't get him down there. I'm the fairy of the wishing well. I've come to weave my magic spell. With a hey nonny nonny and a ding dong bell. I'm the pity itty fairy of the wishing well. Who let you mugs in? Suffering stoats. Tell her, Sam. You can't speak to the boss like that. He's a mayor. He's the new owner of this theatre, see? Anything amiss, miss? Mayor? He looks more like an old hat. So well, you're the new owner, eh? Hey! Come here, Danny! Hey! Hey! Boss, this place will drive me screwy! It's an echo, you chump. Echo, you chump. Hello? Hello? Who's your lady friend? Who's the little girlie by your side? I've seen you. With a gutter, too. Oh. 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 I am surprised at you. This is from speaking. Your theater is ruined, and so are you. Ta-ta for now. I can catch that scoundrel, I'll strangle him with his own sauerkraut. Oh, it's humiliating, that's what it is, boss. Who is this guy fool? Why is he always after us? Who's behind him? If I knew Sam, I wouldn't be giving myself this headache. Anyway, I'm not worrying about Fumph. He's just a tenpenny trunk call. Well, how far is a tenpenny trunk call? Well, you would ask that. Well, look, Sam. Say this is Biggles Wade here. Now, is it... Sam, did you see what I saw? Turn round. No, you turn round, boss. No, I promised my grandmother I'd never look back. Is that him? Is that the man that robbed us? Robbed you? Who do you think I am? Sweeney Tom? He's a dirty crack. You mean dirty crook? He says he's the new governor. Quite right. I am the new governor. Your worship the mayor. And may I remind you, as legal owner of these premises, I shall prosecute all trespassers with the utmost rigor of the law. That's telling them, boss. Hey, come on, Mr. We want no excuses. You owe us each eight of the pound. Eight of the pound? What are you selling, plums? I do not sell palms. Palms? You mean plums? Yes, I said palms. Listen, Garibaldi, it's P-L-U-M-S, palms. You mean plums. Now, please, will you dig the door up? Come on, hand over the smackers. Yeah! Come on! What do you want? 
want our money back. Yeah. 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 Now, perhaps I can explain. You see, we're all members of the school. School? Yeah, this is the Olympian Academy of Dramatic Art, and I'm the star pupil. Oh. All right, all right, all right, I can act you guys off the stage. And now I surprise you, I'm the guy that dropped the sandbag. Yeah, and here's another thing. I'm the guy that says, I say, would you mind awfully moving over a little bit, there? Different voice. I like the sandbag best. As you bought the theatre, I'm afraid you're also responsible for the school. Well, I wouldn't mind teaching you a thing or two if I could, but... Uh... But nothing. We want our money back. What do you think we are? A lot of poopers? Poopers? Don't talk garlic. You mean paupers. You see, they've paid half their fees to the old owner, Mr. Bookham, and he's disappeared. Yeah, Mr. Bookham, the first time I heard that man, I said to myself, whoa -ho. Oh. The school's a flop, a washout. Now, let me get this thing straight. How much do I charge per term for tuition? Oh, 16 pounds. 60? Then each of you owe me eight pounds. Have you no sense of financial responsibility? It's perfectly putty got it. Pay you? What can you teach us? Everything from Hamlet down to paper tearing. Do you know anything about the show business? Oh, I should think so. Why, my dear old aunt used to iron Grimaldi's tights. And only a few moments ago, I had to tear myself away from the great C.B. Cato. Cato? Yes. I only left the stage to become mayor. Mayor? Don't tell me you've never heard of Big Tom Handbell. Go on, boss. Show him. Let's hit the trail, Big Timer. You've heard of the soldier's farewell, I dare say, and the arrow's farewell to his steed. But here's a farewell, a pretty farewell to a horse of a different breed. Hang all my clothes on the old clothes horse I've been chased by the sheriff too long And I've walked all the way from the bunkhouse today So I'm singing a tenderfoot song Hang up my saddle of mutton And bring me a chop for a change And wheel in the old dinner wagon Cause I'm right in the kitchen rain don't let all my pals know I'm drying. They'll all think this buddy's gone wrong. On the back of a chair you will find the old man cause I'm singing a tender foot song. Mighty fine, mighty fine. Howdy, partner. Howdy. Meet the horse. Why, that's the mighty fine Mustang you got to him, my friend. Mighty fine, mighty fine. <laughs> I oh, know, folks, before we hit the hay, how about singing a mighty fine chorus before the mighty fine campfire? Mighty fine! Mighty fine! Mighty fine! Give me the A, partner. So rang all my clothes on the old clothes horse. We've been chased by the sheriff too long. And I walked all the way from the bunkhouse today, so I'm singing a tenderfoot song. Hang up my saddle of mutton. And bring me a chop for a change And wheel in the old dinner wagon Or some ride in the kitchen range Don't let all my pals go and ride They all think it's done, it's gone wrong On the back of a chair to find the old man Mighty fine Mighty fine, mighty fine. I'll teach you all I know about that tomorrow morning. It won't take very long. Ah, dancing and music. Just like cup of tea, Sam. Remind me to open an operatic class, will you? Ten guineas extra. Sure. Wait till they see me play sound study. Oh. This will be your office now, Mr. Henry. What, Bookham? Sam, obliterate that scoundrel's name at once. Sure. The moment I saw it, I said to myself, oh, no. Well, that'll be all. To half an hour, students. Hey, what are you doing? Gray for his time bomb the mayor. Friends, humans, pupils. Your future is before you. Remember, the stars of today are the night lights of tomorrow. Place yourself in my hands. I swear by my chain of office, shine the chain, Sam, that each and every one of you will ascend the ladder of fame wrong by wrong. Give yourselves to art. Art with a capital R. Only another eight quid, and you'll have your name in lights. Right. Now run along, students. Practice your party pieces, loosen your larynx, tighten your tights, and report at 10.30 in the morning when we start our classes. Oh. He's a great guy, a great guy. Will you step into my parlor? But remind me to get some etchings, Sam. Ah, something like an office. Something. 
Mighty fine, mighty fine. If you're the new owner, perhaps I'd better tell you what I've been doing. My dear girl, I'm broad-minded. Need we worry about our past? What is your name? I'm Kitty Ken, secretary of the school. Well, Kitty, whatever your salary is, I shall double it. I work here for nothing. Very well, I'll treble it. <laughs> you see, I'm a student too, but I act as secretary instead of paying for tuition. Well, from now on, you get private lessons in my public school. <laughs> I'm in the next room. Just ring if you want me. What a marvelous idea. And where is the bell? In your room. I know, it's there on your desk. On my desk. Sam, the moment I saw that Judy, I said to myself, where's that bell? After you, Claude. No, after you, Cecil. Dancing class will begin at 10.30 tomorrow morning. What do you two ballet dancers want? I've got a writ. Twit. Is yours for room and board, Claude? No, mine's for disposition, Cecil. Hey, what are you talking about? These summons is for W.B. Bookham, the scoundrel, and he's hooked it. It's for his flat. That? 45 Mayfair Manor. 700 pounds, 19 and... And a tanner? That's right. I wish I had as many shillings. So we lived there two years without paying any rent, did he? Just the sort of place I want. Take the address, Bess. Who's Bess, boss? You is, Liz. Now listen, you two, it's no good you giving me these writs. They're not worth the salvage they're written on. But once my theatre's on its feet, I'll be rolling in Boodle, and you shall have a roll with me. Well, there's no need for us to stay, eh? We'd better go, Joe. After you, Claude. No, after you, Cecil. Come. Well, cuddle me in the council chamber. Fortify Mayfair Manor. What a posh address, Sam, eh? It's worth every penny of the rent I'll never pay. From now on, we live there. Oh, gee, boss, can't we go back where we belong? We ain't got a dime. Before long, you'll have all the fun and dimes you want. Eight quid a week from my students for a start. Mere chicken feed. Oh, what I could do to a chicken right now. Well, what's one empty stomach between friends? I'll rebuild the theatre. I'll put on the finest show London's ever seen. I'll make hundreds of pounds. Thousands. Millions. Where's that bell? seen so many legs since the local butcher shop was closed. Well, gather round, everybody, gather round. Sam, open up the office. I have something very important I want to tell you all. I can see a magnificent future before all of you for the mere sum of... And as we told you before, you find us jobs or else there is... I'm not talking to you, you macaroni mug. Your opinion's not worth it. What about these jobs you've been promising for a fortnight? You haven't paid your fees for a fortnight, see? If you don't do something soon, I'll fetch my Uncle Percy. Uncle Percy. I make mincemeat of Uncle Percy's. Oh, gee, boss, could I go for some mincemeat? So you don't trust me, eh? After all I've done for you. Very well, then. Sam, Sam, pick up the cash box. We'll go into conference. Where's the nearest? Uh, Mr. Hanley? Uh, <clears throat> yes? Ah, oh, I've got something for you. Bump the bailiff, Sam. Hey, listen, buddy. You can't see the boss without an appointment, so take it easy. He took it mighty fine. Let that be a lesson to you, students. Take this, Sam. Wait till you get a load of what I've cooked up for them. Oh, gee, boss, must you use that word? Good morning. Good morning. Nice day. No. You 
you'd like to buy a nice lamppost in perfect condition, wouldn't you? No. Just stick it up in front of the house. What's the good of a lamppost in the blackout? Oh, this one's all right. Invisible light. You'll never see it after dark. Well, I'm going to find my way home. Oh, ask a policeman. That's a good idea, sir. One lamppost, three pounds, thirteen and sixpence. Sign, please. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Nice day. Yeah. That must have been an electrician, the gas man. Yeah. Ah. You want to watch that guy, boss? It, it might be food. Oh, nonsense. Mister, it's me knives, I tell you, it's me knives. Hey, will you stay where you are? Come on. Hey, lay off. Hey, I'll do your dirt. What's hey, the matter with you? Are. I'm only trying to get the boss's attention. Well, do you always say it with bullets? Nobody give me a break over here, mister. Why over home in Chicago, even the cops couldn't catch me. I changed my character too quick, see? Like this. I ain't got a million. A different face for every voice. A different voice for every face. I'm colossal. I'm stupendous. Ah, Frasky. Oh, here's another one. Catch us while you wait. You ready? Get a load of this, will you? Look at that. Thou's an amply watch. Thou's an amply watch. The folk dean jeweling is leave all semi hunter. Hawks are gained silver. Guaranteed salt, a bin buckle all fit, stint in every hole, jeweled in every link, I'll take and waterproof. I do not think may watch the price of five, nor four, nor three shillings. All I ask day one half a crown, thirty cup a kind. Here, there's one cup. No, 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 I've just bought a lamppost. Anyway, come to my office tomorrow and impersonate a student giving me eight guineas. Oh, it takes a lot, sir. You're a great guy, a great guy. Ever since I joined up with you, I ain't afraid of nothing. Boo! <laughs> Slap me on the jetty with the jellyfish. That guy must be nuts. So here you are, Hanley. Yes, here today and gone this second. Excuse, please, mister. I sell you a very pretty postal card. I've seen them all. Well, mister, I show you a very pretty Persian carpet for theater. No. Listen, could you show me the Indian rope? Just a moment, I... Hanley. Oh, you, mister, please. I show you a very pretty postal card you like, eh? Very risky, very saucy. Go on, try one. No, thank you. All right, I go. I'll come back. Now, Henry, let's get down to brass tacks. Yes, uh, all right, uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, do you gentlemen like cigars? Good, eh? Well, just put a few in here, will you? I'm collecting them. Now, stop fooling, Henley, and understand this. If the town's money isn't paid in full, we'll jail you and close both theatre and school. Close down the school? I don't know who you are, but I think you ought to be ashamed of yourself when I think how Mr. Henley is sacrificing himself. Oh, true. How Devoting true. all his skill and knowledge. Oh, very true. Never very sparing true. himself for a moment to make our school a success. Oh, dear. Perhaps we better defer putting the man in stir. Oh, do you think so, Mr. Townsclerk? Well, if I thought there was any chance of Henley repaying the money. But, uh... All he needs is time. What? Time? Oh, oh yes, I see what you mean. Uh, gentlemen, I'm expecting to close a colossal deal this very afternoon. What? You doubt my words? Very well, then. Sam, get me C.B. Cato on the phone, now. But, boss, I, I thought you wasn't going to... Get Cato on the phone, oh. Okay, boss. Well, I suppose you've all heard of C.B. Cato. Uh, who hasn't? Why, do you actually know him? As well as I know the water on my wishbone. Now, I want you all to listen to this historic conversation. I expect to put over the biggest theatrical deal in history. Here, Titch, you have a do, too. Okay, boss. C.B. Cato's on the line. Hello, Tommy, you old rascal. How about having dinner with me tonight? I'll uh, just look at my engagement book. Uh, I'm up to my neck in it these days, you know. Well, 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 He's talking to C.P. Cato now, so quietly. Now, I've given a good deal of thought to the whole proposition, and here is my final word. If we agree to put on the Hillary Craven play, I must have at least 50% of the profits. That's okay by me, Tommy, old boy. We ought to make 100,000 easily. Is that all? Well, I wouldn't have gone to all this trouble if I'd known. However, I've given my word. Thanks, Tommy. I knew I could rely on you. You would never let a pal down. But the simple matter of casting the show... Oh, don't give it another thought, C.B. My students are marvelous. That's good. We need new blood. I'll give them all star parts. Uh, those who paid you their fees, of course. Yeah. Okay, C.B., every student that stands by me will be rewarded. Hello, Tommy, you old rascal. How about having dinner with me tonight? I thought we'd settled all this before. Of course, Tommy. 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 We need new blood. 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 Well, I think blood. the uh, best way to blood. explain the whole thing is quite simple. 
All we have to do. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don Valentino, where have you been, oh? Don Valentino, don't tell a lie. It's plainly Sino, Machuca Vino, has brought that naughty look to your eye. Don Valentino, you're very mean, oh, oh will you ever learn to act right? Who never wanna come home to Donna, till that cantina is closed for the night. Although, you know, I love you so. So and so, I change the scene and go to Reno to tell the judge how wicked you are. Don Valentino, you jumping beano. If you've a serenade that's new time, you started to practice it on your guitar. Yes, that's out, and the place was stolen. It's your fault. Mine? Yes, for walking out on that drunken playwright husband of yours. You've got to go back to him. Not me. I gave him the best years of my life in our six months of marriage. Yes, but he's gone to pieces. All I got so far is a title. Not a line of the plays he given me, not a line. Look at these. Costumes designed, sets made, not a line. And that's not all. Five thousand pounds of advanced that human body bed on the promise of the play. Oh, CB, you're beginning to bore me. Hillary may be a souse, but you've made a packet out of his plays. Huh? Well, I'll get that play out of Hillary Craven somehow, and he won't be a painless extraction. I'll... This has just come from Hillary Craven. Ah, the play. He's come to his senses at last. <laughs> his research library. Write it yourself, sucker. <laughs> but what do you want us to do with all our beautiful designs, Mr. Cato? Oh, Stella, do you mind going out while I tell him? Now, look here, you. Oh, gee, boss, I, I'm so hungry, I feel as if my stomach was full of butterflies. Let's feed it back home, boss. Nonsense, Sam. I'm hungry, too. But I see a fortune awaiting me in the theater, and I'm going right after it. I've got the bit between my teeth. Well, I wish I had a bit between mine. All I need is wider scope. No obstacle shall bar my way. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. I didn't see you with your mouth open. Now then, Sam, slip back to the theater and get my robe of office. Okay, boss. Uh, Lummy, a flash in Japan. Yes, they're open all night. Well, there's only room for one at a time. No, I haven't any change. Ask the attendant. I don't own it. Well, press button B and get your money back. Oh, thanks a lot. I mean, thank you. <laughs> so it's you, is it? Go on, take him out. I know you. You couldn't bluff a bobby in the blackout. Gee, I'd be the finest character actor in the world except for one thing. What's that? It's my noise, I tell you. It's my noise. Oh. I'll be bumping into Goebbels next. My, haven't you grown? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, could you oblige me with the light? Huh? Eh? Well. Here you are. Henley. The very man I want to see. Fennel. The funnel now commence. Henley, uh, come back here. Come back, Henley. Henley's that was a narrow shape. Henley. Here, why don't you meet more tennis? I know that voice. It's him, Uncle Percy. Oh, it is, is it? I've got a bone to pick with you. I'll just go and get the mat. <laughs> After him, Uncle Percy. Hey, come back. Henley. Hey, Henley. 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 Hey, Henley. Come back. Henley. Drop those chips. This is his saloon bar news, and this is Herman Funf reading it. Now, oh, Funf, eh? A man named Handley is stealing potato chips from the Miramar bar. Uh, excuse me, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Can I get your drink, sir? Uh, no, thanks. No, I've, uh, I've not finished this one yet. Thank you very much. Uh. Yours, please, mister? Well, if it isn't Dan, Dan the peddling man. You buy a nice bottle of perfume for pretty lady? Very strong, very pongy. Sell it to the barman. There's an awful aroma around here. Oh, that's not barman. That's me. You buy perfume? No? No. Oh, pity, mister. And I don't you want any of those either. Oh, very mustard. Very pepper. That for my insomnia. Now go on, hop it before I fling your fez on the floor. Oh, come on, outside. All right, you. all right. I go. 
I come back. Come on, I go, right? I go, I go. Mister. Go on, outside. No, go on. You're Handley, I believe. That's right. I'm very pleased to meet you. I feel like a dead end, kid. What about my niece? Why, they're troubling you again. Oh, your niece? Oh, Daisy. Oh, favorite of mine. Very promising pupil. Uh, shall we drink to her future? Oh. Well, I am sort of thirsty. Rather early for the cuckoo. Well, gentlemen, <clears throat> yes. I, I see by your shoulder badges that you belong to an honorable corps. I got badges on my uniform, too. Oh? Yours are for the commandos, but mine. Ah, mine. Huh? What's yours? A teeny weeny double scotch. Huh? Double scotch, yes, sir. And what's yours, sir? I'd better have the same. Very good, sir. <whistles> Six shillings, sir. <clears throat> well, cheer up. <clears throat> ah, lovely drop of breakfast. I needed that. I've had a very full day on an empty tummy. I seem to have seen you before somewhere. Didn't we meet the other night down at the Chavin? Chavin? What Chavin? Same again. That'll be another six shillings, sir. What a common pub. Ah, <coughs> well, get along, you must. Oh, I no, you don't. Yeah, don't do that to me. Who do you think's frightened of you? You are. Yes, I know I am, but do you know of anybody else? I'm looking after my niece, see? You pinched eight pounds from her, didn't you? You promised her the earth, didn't you? Well, I want that eight quid back, see? Trouble is, I don't have my own strength. Here, I'll show you something. Watch this. Yes, sir? Uh, the gentleman wants another round. Very good, sir. That'll be another six shillings. Yeah. No, I'll my dear here. sir, your niece's future is my greatest concern. I only this afternoon, I was talking about it to the great C.B. Cato. Yeah, I heard on a gramophone record, you know Cato. <laughs> I know them all. Cato, Cochrane, George Black, Noel Coward. Hillary Craven. Hillary Craven? Why, he's one of my best pals. We've stuck together through thick and clear. Do you know he's actually promised to write a new play for your niece? Hmm? And how about buying him a drink, eh? Don't butt in, old boy. I'm busy with a client. A liqueur brandy, Joe. Oh. I think you're fed enough, Mr. Craven. I think so, too. Mr. Craven? Damn be he who first cries out, enough. You're buying Hillary a drink, aren't you, old pal? Well, I'll fall through the fanlight on my flapjack. Hillary, <laughs> fancy meeting you here, eh? <laughs> you know your old pal Tom, don't you? Tom, Tom, the piper's son, stole a pig in a way, you ran. <laughs> what did you do with that pig, eh, you dirty crook? Um, I gave it away for a pot of ferns. <laughs> uh, Uncle Percy, meet my old friend, Hillary Craven. Pleased, I'm sure. He doesn't know his own strength. First, show him that trick of the nail. Want me to do the same again? You heard that? The same again, please. Same again. And a liqueur brandy for me, Joe. Suffering cats. Well, now that our dear Daisy's well set on the road to fame, you'll excuse me if I go into conference with uh, Mr. Craven, will you? All right. But you'd better do right by her or else. That'll be another ten shillings, sir. Uh -huh. You poor fish. You didn't ought to be allowed out alone. Should we have a drink at the bar? No, there's a table over there. Well, I can do with a drink, I can tell you. And when I say a drink, I mean a drink. You still burnt up about Hillary walking out on you. I'm used to it by now. <coughs> Here. Yeah, yeah. They followed me. Who? He's from far after you, too. Shh. It's the ingratitude that gets me. When I think of all I've done for that rat of a husband of yours, and he hasn't written a line. Did you hear that? Shh. Shh. Haven't written a line, eh? That's all he knows. The best play I've ever written. All finished except the last scene. A Hillary Craven play's worth dough. What do we do now? Find another play. Hillary Craven's not the only scribbler on the stage. Did you hear that? Scribbler? Me? Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tear it into tiny pieces oh. and throw it in Cato's face. Anyway, I've got one satisfaction. I've been to Scotland Yard. The police are after him now. I'm not going to let that souse chisel 5,000 pounds out of me. Shh! You're waking the fire watcher. Oh, oh fire watcher. Come on. 
Well, our lift's out of order. Come on, let's get a drink. No, you don't want any more. I'll give you a lift. Oh, if you'll give me a lift, eh? Come on. Taxi? Up to Daisy. Tell me. I'll be finished before your play. Well, that'll never be finished. What's the good? I shan't get any more money out of Cato. Well, Ben. Shh. If you were to finish this play, you could sign it with another name, and I could take it to Cato. And touch him for another advance? Oh, boy, what an idea. I'll finish it right now. Don't write it on my back. Come on. And remember, we go 50-50. That's the bet. I'll start work right away. Get me a piano and a typewriter. I'm going Princess Priscilla, attended by her maids of honor, appears in the royal bedchamber. She awaits the entrance of Prince Rudolph. You got that? Yes. She asks herself a question. Must she endure the embraces of a man she does not love? Sadly, she sings to herself, I must get that song finished. Around the corner, around the corner, find the picture on the wall. Too late, it's on my toe. It's on his toe. It's our time to. It's on his toe. It's the latest grand piano. She played the piccolo. Got it, I've got it! Just for tonight, my soul will sing with rapture. It's terrific. Far better than anything that drunken husband of yours ever wrote. It's wonderful. Wonderful? It's sensational. Just imagine Hilary Craven's face when I present this show at the Imperial Theatre. Who wrote it? Well, a fellow called Beamish. I've never heard of him. Uh, you might get me Ben Beamish on the telephone, will you? Gerard 2626. I want him here at once. Good morning. Good heavens. Nice day. No. Can I sell you my patent delayed action sound of them? Delayed action? Yes. Delayed action. Anything you write with it disappears in a few moments. That's handily. Just my handwriting. Yes, definitely. It's absolute specific against breach of promise actions. Uh, ten shillings, please. I'll give you an I.O.U. Oh, here's the pen. And there's the pen. I.O.U. Ten shillings. Thank you. I'll call again. Do. Good morning. Good morning. Nice day. Good heavens. It works. <laughs> I say, I say, what's going on here? I've got my receipt for the first installment. 
If we can't get the money out of you, we'll get it out of your furniture. I'd love to dangle you on my chain of office. Come on, out of my way. Here, what is all this? Bring those things back. What's the big idea? Pay these kids their cash and you can have this stuff back. Sam! Sam! Where's my bodyguard? Shall I show him, Uncle Percy? Yeah, show him. All right, Sam, don't speak with your mouth full. I know, something terrible has happened. He's made of us a laughing stick. Laughing stick? You mean a goatscape? Idiota! Thanks very much. After you! Claude, no. After you. This is Ah, these gentlemen will have something to say. Here, tell this guy he can't move my furniture. It doesn't belong to me. Well, now, the law says... No. What does the law say? After you, Claude. After you, Cecil. Now, let that be a lesson to you. Huh? I'll take it. Hello? Who? Beamish? Anyone here named Beamish? No, there's nobody here named Beamish. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Wait a minute, Beamish? Beamish? Well, that's the man I represent. Hello? Who is it? C.B. Cato? Here, hold that for a minute, will you? C.B. Cato. Huh. Once more, he push our legs. Yeah, right. It is C.B. Cato. Here, give me that phone, quick. Hello? Yes? Hello, old man. Yes, I want to have a word with you about your play. You like it, C.B.? You want to produce it, C.B.? You'll pay me advance royalty, C.B.? Right, I'll be over right away, C.B. That was okay. Is this on the level, Handley? Are you really going to see Cato? Those who don't believe me, Come and see for themselves. Okay, we will. All right. I hope it is really, Cato. I hope it's from the heart of my stomach. Don't be so bellicose. Hang around, Sam. I'll see you later. <laughs> now, in one moment, all your doubts will be relieved. And you can apologize when I come out. Hey, just a minute. Season. Ah, well, here I am, CB. You? <laughs> Acrobata! Just uh, practicing a little adagio dance. I'll be out in a minute. I bet he will. <laughs> now listen, CB, you made a great mistake. Yes, I did. This time you're going out of the window. Well, if I do, I'll take my play with me. And you'll get no princess for tonight or any other night. Your play? Did you really write princess for tonight? Well, I, uh... Ah, oh, now don't be modest. I know a genius when I meet one. Do you? My dear sir, I didn't realize. You know, I thought you were someone else. Uh, won't you sit down? Thanks very much, thank you. And, uh, and have a cigar. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is my leading lady, Miss Stella Ferris. What a beautiful production. May I ring up your curtain? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have your contract already. A uh, CB never allows the grass to grow under his feet. Neither do I. It tickles my instep. <laughs> <laughs> if Cato throws him out again, I'll throw him back. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Advance on royalties, 200 pounds. There you are. Thanks very much. May I offer you my congratulations, Mr. Beamish? Oh, I'm not Beamish, I'm Tommy Handley. Then why did you say you wrote the play? I didn't say I wrote the play. I said I represent Beamish. I'm his manager. Well, I won't have any track with agents. The deal's off. Now get out. Oh, but just a minute. If I'd been Beamish, you'd have given me the check. That's who it's made out to? Well, as a matter of fact... You are Beamish. There you are, CB. I knew it all the time. Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, just a matter of civic dignity. I had to use a Maldemar. What? Oh, well, I'll soon write you another tick uh, to, um... Uh, Thomas Handley. Ah, yes. Don't forget to uh, dot the Y. He must have killed him. Cato's got in first. Mm -hmm. Well, Tommy, I'm glad everything is settled. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Handley. Goodbye. Together we'll go very far. I hope we get back in time. <laughs> you must come down to the theatre this afternoon. Yeah. Time is getting short and we must start casting. That's right, CB. We must have a good cast. The best that money can buy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is there is going to be a play. My play, a Tommy Handley masterpiece. I'm just going round to the bank now to cash this cheque for 200 pounds advance royalties. Come round with me and you can have that paltry eight pounds I'm supposed to owe you. How would you like this money? Uh, quickly. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, a few twenties, tenors and fivers, and the rest in hapenies for tips. Yes, but you haven't endorsed the cheque, Mr. Hanley. Oh, yes, I have, old boy. I... Oh, yes, I see. Oh, well, perhaps I'd better use your pen. Yes. I'll attend to Mr. Hanley. Right, sir. Lovely day we're having today. I'm just drawing out a little money for pontoon. I mean the petty cash. Ah, oh, yes. Two hundred pounds. On the school account, I believe. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. 
Very thoughtful of you. Just about cover the school's overdraft with us. Oh, oh. But you, you can't take all that money, Mr. Ramsbottom. It doesn't belong to me. It's got your name on it. That's good enough for us. Oh, I see. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you very, very much, Mr. Ramsbottom. Yes. It'll be quite safe in, in this pocket. Good morning. Nice day. On second thoughts, I'm going to give you all another chance. I won't insist on paying back your paltry eight pounds. Well, don't be late for the class in the morning. Ta-ta for now. Just a moment. Since you've kept the students on, I take it they'll all be in the show. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You will say that. In writing. On the bottom of these contracts. You put your signify on this spotted line. Well, uh, just what are these contracts? Giving them all principal parts in your new play. Sign those contracts uh, now, or I'm going to start invasion exercises. Oh. I, uh, yes, all right. I'll sign them. Only too delighted. Here's a pen. No, thank you. I have my own fountain pen. Uh, a very special one. It works beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Will you give your name to that chap sitting at the desk there? Oh, yes, that's quite right. Well, I think I've got something for you here. Yeah? Uh, have a look at that, will you? Uh, you might be sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I can't. No, I can't. Oh, Sam, this is the way. Three more, that's eight and six. You might try the dance. Dummy! Okay, no. Who is it, Fulton? Worse than that, Uncle Percy and his gang. Body. I tell you, he won't have him. Mr. Cato, what's the meaning of this, George? Why'd you let these people in? Because I couldn't keep them out, sir. Well, what do you want? Parts in this show for these boys and girls. Ridiculous. The show's already cast. I'll say it is. These kids have all got contracts signed by Handley. Yes. Yes. What? Well, we'll soon see about that. Handley! Handley! What the devil do you mean by wasting my time? There are no signatures on these contracts. Hmm? But we saw Handley sign them. He's done it, Thomas. He must have used the incredible ink. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. I'll fix Handley for this. Well, now get out of my theater, all of you. Go on, get out. Yeah, I want to play Handley in my bed. Uh, yeah, see these people off the premises, will you? Ah, that's got rid of them. Come on, Sam, back to work. Lovey, the jackpot. <gasps> I'm fed up with this. Writing, writing all the time and not a drop to drink. And where is that advance payment you were supposed to get? I told you before, I I'm getting it tonight. Tonight? You've said that every night for the past three weeks. And now you've got an address suit. Tonight, uh, Cato's uh, bringing along uh, <clears throat> his backers. I've got to look my best, haven't I? And the better I look, the more you'll get. Look here. Princess for Tonight is the best play I've ever written. And I was a fool to let you try and sell it for me. Now get out of my clothes, I'm getting out. Now, Hillary, Hillary, don't do anything rash. If you leave here, your postal address will be dark, Moy. Now be a good boy and see what Daddy's brought you. Flash the bottle, Aristotle. Ah. Oh. If we're not back in a week's time, don't wait up. Princess for tonight is the most elaborate premiere since the war began. And looking round, I can see this foyer absolutely thronged with celebrities. And now coming in through the door, yes, it is the world's greatest playwright. What a pleasure to see you here. Mr. Shaw, good evening, sir. Would you care to say a few words? I rarely attend first nights, except, of course, my own. They're really the only ones worth seeing. Though I have been told this one is exceptionally bad. But you are going to see it, Mr. Shaw. Not bloody likely. <laughs> are you sure? I'm certain. Well, I'm not. Aha, still trying to fool me with your phony faces. <laughs> it's my noise, I it's my noise. It's his noise. And now I want to introduce to you a very famous man to say a few words. A man whose genius has done so much for the British theater. Thank you very much. Hello, folks. This is His Worship the Mayor speaking. Now, some children are born with silver spoons in their mouths. I was born with a fountain pen in my fist. The idea of this play came to me when I was having a blow on the front. I wrote it with a hairpin on a piece of fried bread. And now, here's the fat stock prices. Excuse me, my man. I'm due round the back. Uh, Mr. Handley, Mr. Handley, I've got something here for you. Pump the bailiff, Sam. Dear me, dear me. Pray applause for His Worship the Mayor.
Sam, Sam, I've got a stiff neck. Hey, boss, you've caught your chain in a chunk of chain labra. Oh, thank you, Sam. That's beyond a choke. You buy a pretty program, very wicked, very warm. But well, this is for another play. Much better. Very harem, very scarem. Too darem, too barem. You know about program? No, I've got a touch of the tapioca. Pretty. Here you. Can I see your ticket? No ticket. Only program. You buy. Come on. Outside. Come on. All right. I go. But you come back. No. No, come back. Pity. Beware, Mr. Mayor. Your show will be a flop a room. You have been born from has spoken. Oh. I got his connection, Sam. This time I'll get him, boss. I'll, I'll mow him down. Can I do your nails, sir? Well, dust my dicky with the dish club. Mrs. Mop, have you been charting at Buckingham Palace? Oh, I've brought this for you, sir. Oh, isn't that nice? I made it out of my own head, sir. I hope you've taken the hairpins out. It should have been eel pie, but I couldn't catch the eel. <laughs> you didn't even Sam. Uh, no, boss. But I got the salt and pepper. Oh, good. Thanks very much. There we are. What did you stuff this with, salvage? Well, that's just all shoe for luck, sir. Set off for now. You takes a bow. Ah, oh, well, Sam. Perhaps this horse will bring me luck. Boss! Boss! Something to... Don't make a noise like a motorboat. All right, I'll come quietly. Why, Councillor Fennel, you're as welcome as a gumball on the glottis. Uh, you've come to see my show, of course. We have. Oh, well, lucky you. Well, how are things going at Foaming at the Mouth? All right, eh? I bet they're missing their mayor. Well, this time you won't be missed. The superintendent has a warrant for your arrest. And if the show is not a success... Which... The balloon, I, I mean the curtain's just going up. So make yourself a... Oh, Mr. I can tell you that the curtain's just gone up on the Budapest nightclub scene. Ah, for tonight, my soul will sing with rapture. One song of bliss will echo through the night. Just for tonight, my longing heart will capture love's thrilling kiss. Eyes that love light and tender but rather alarming as he seemed in my dream. My music, my words, my wife. You're listening to Princess for Tonight, written and composed by Thomas Henry, a newly discovered genius of the theatre. The rat. The double-crossing crook! Oh, rat! Talk to all I know about unarmed combat. Go to it. Yes, 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 yes. It's a cinch. We'll give them the works. This is my big chance. <laughs> Them students, they got me scared. Why ain't they done something after that trick you did to them with the fountain pen? Oh, probably some strange power I have over them. 
Thank you. Hello, Kitty. You're late. Come and sit close to me. I may want to dictate a letter to you. Mr. Henley, something terrible has happened. Hey, you're swiping my line. Your students were all on the stage of the Olympian Theatre. Now they've disappeared. They must have been drinking the ink out of my fountain pen. I'll bet they're out to do you some dirty tricks, boss. They're out to get you. Nonsense. I'll have them eating out of my hands. Oh, gee, boss, eating. <laughs> I always find the world okay in hail or snow or rain. Go home and tell your mother she should keep you on the chain. Good morning. Nice day. Good morning, I'll call again. Uh, uh, very good, wasn't he? Even if it was a bit awkward for Miss Blandish. Uh, I mean, Ferris. <laughs> How did that mug get on the stage? <clears throat> What the devil's going on here? Where is everyone? What's the meaning of this? Get up, are you all drunk? Ah, now, now the show really begins. The big undressing number. My own idea, Sam. Remind me to open a cafe. Strip tea sixpence with shrimp snipers. Don't be common, Sam. Kitty, you must understudy this number. We'll start rehearsals tomorrow. Windler. Come outside and be murdered. Run, boss! Run, boss! Run, boss! Run, boss! Run, boss! Run, boss! Run, Mm-hmm. 
What would his majesty say if he were to find you here? You must go now. I wish you had a lay down. <laughs> after you, Claude. No, after you, Cecil. Get out from under that lampshade, Handley. This is all evil. I present a dramatic monologue written and composed by myself, entitled, Hats Off to Winston Churchill. In history's pages, there's many a hero, from Julius J. Caesar to Emperor Nero. His queen, Borestia, and Mary, Queen of Scots. So, hats off! The Churchill, the best of the lot. There's Rob Roy of Scotland. No, it's mine. Well, what about me? Shut up. Shut up. Daisy goes on next. There was Alfred the King, whose cakes got too hot. So, hats up the Churchill, the best of the lot. And then the cake. I'll shoot it down in flames. Not even tomorrow. Pretty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ah, oh, Mr. Handley, Mr. Burr, Handley, Mr. Hanley. Hi. It's a fair cop. I'll take the summons. Summons? On behalf of my syndicate, I am empowered to offer you five thousand pounds for your Olympian theatre. What? Come out of there, Hanley! Come on! All right. It's a deal. Sign. Come on, come on, sign. 
Johnny, Johnny. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I got a penny. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Hadley. Good night. Goodbye. Excuse me, gentlemen. Arrest him, Superintendent. Just a minute. I have here a check for five thousand pounds. What by? And never let it be said that the fair name of Hadley has fouled the filthy name of foaming at the mouth. Thank you. Well, I, I must say you surprised me, Your Worship. I'm afraid we misjudged you. You. Why, it's just a blank. Blummy, my delayed action pen. I love Valley Palace. Very graceful. Say so. Now let me do you. Goody, goody. Sir, don't forget the diver. I'm going down now, sir. Get off and out. 